A group of officials are gathered in a room. Many of them have shining medals pressed against them. They all take a look towards the head of the meeting. A woman stares at them and then mumbles, Sink it. That woman is Margaret Thatcher, and this is the Falklands War on the History Corps. Before we get into this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel so you can learn more about history. If we get 150 subscribers by the end of the year, we'll upload a special documentary. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. Many of you are probably wondering, a war between England and Argentina, is this a soccer game? However, in 1982, the militaries of England and Argentina engaged in a 10-week conflict over control of the Falkland Islands. Let's find out why this happened. The Falkland Islands are a group of islands located off the coast of Argentina. Argentina had laid claim to these islands since 1833, but the British rejected this claim and kicked the native Argentinians off the island. Finally, in 1982, the Argentinian government, led by President General Leopoldo Galtieri, decided to invade the islands and forcefully kick the British off the island. Never a good idea. Galtieri's decision was due to the reason that his own people were struggling. They were in an economic mess, and his popularity was at an all-time low. He believed that he could reignite the patriotism and support of his people by retaking the Falklands, or Islas Malvinas, an island that, had want that they had wanted for quite some time. As you'll see, quite the opposite happens. In the early hours of April 2nd, Two Argentinian cruisers advanced through the South Atlantic and towards the East Falklands. The capital city, Port Stanley, was near to the East Falklands. The landing crafts were deployed. Over 600 conscripts were on their way to the Falklands. With armored personal carriers, heavy machine guns, motors, and recoilless rifles. They were able to go towards the capital without facing much resistance. In total... Over a hundred Royal Marines were stationed on the island, and they were outnumbered six to one and expected to surrender without much of a fight. However, the Royal Marines fought and were able to inflict multiple casualties without suffering any of their own. They kept this up for three hours. They then surrendered. When news of the capture of the Falklands reached the people of South America, it was met by, for the most part other than Chile, an elated response. Over 250,000 people gathered at the heart of the capital to show their overwhelming patriotism. They had days earlier been there to protest unemployment and inflation. This was what Galtieri expected, however, this was not to last. On the other side of the world, there was the UK. Their reaction was understandably quite different. The current state of the UK wasn't good. They were in economic ruins. There were riots all over the nation. And many of their colonies were falling, with India in 1947 and South America getting independent in mid-1961. They were witnessing uh, the end of an era of British rule, which arguably ended with the World Wars. This was one of the final colonial powers to die off, and they were determined to hold on to this one small piece of land on the opposite side of the world. Sure, it wasn't an important island by any means, however, it would show that the British hadn't fallen off from power, and that no weaker nation could toy with them without a fitting response. The Prime Minister at the time was Margaret Thatcher. And she wasn't very popular at the time. She was all of a sudden presented with the opportunity to restore the people's patriotism and support of her. And she was sure to take it. She immediately set up a 200 mile exclusion zone in which any Argentinian ship could be fired in. The United States was their greatest ally. However, at this time, America was busy dealing with communism and... Galtieri was a staunch anti-communist, so they wouldn't want to help remove him with the potential of a communist leader coming to power. Reagan, the president at the time, sent the Secretary of State Alexander Haig to London to share America's stance on the situation. 
On April 5th, the hastily assembled task force was launched towards the Falklands. The task force had over 127 vessels with naval and merchant ships. There were cruise liners doubling as troop transport and hospital ships. The flagship of the task force was the HMS Herms, one of the two aircraft carriers in the task force. Her planes were all put above deck when she set sail. This was contrary to where the planes were usually kept underneath in the storage facilities. This was done to furthermore rally the people and to show that the world that they were not messing around. Margaret Thatcher's war cabinet consisted of her most trusted military and political advisors. Chief of Defense Staff Admiral Terence Lewin was in charge of setting the cabinet's agenda. The agenda at that point was to liberate the Falklands and remove the occupational forces. The Junta, otherwise known as the leader of Argentina, Galtieri, was even less likely to give up the islands. A U.S. diplomat by the name of John of Jean Kirkpatrick said in a 1990 interview, I don't think they understood what war was like. They didn't understand they were going to be defeated badly. And they didn't really understand that young Argentinians and young Brits were going to die in this effort. This was the real Don Quixote F sense of unreality about their attitude as I experienced it. The Argentinian leaders who had so many medals on them actually had little combat experience, and the same was true for the Argentinian soldiers, who were mainly made up of conscripts with very little training, many of them still being teenagers. Their opponents, the British, had many skilled groups within their task force, Royal Marines, Parachute Regiment, Gurkhas, the Scots Guard, just to name a few. Once the Argentinians realized that the British were going to respond, they sent in reinforcements. The British set up a base on Ascension Island, which allowed them to quickly recapture the Georgian Islands by April 25th. On May 1st, the fighting began. The first clashes were in the air. The Argentinians may have outnumbered them with 13,000 troops, but the British held the technological advantage, plus their troops were well trained. The British had recently acquired the Harrier, a vertical takeoff slash landing vehicle. It had the latest Sidewinder missile system, which made it possible for aces to shoot down four Argentinian fighters on their first day. On May 2nd, a British submarine, HMS Conqueror, sank, sank an Argentinian cruiser by the name of General Belgrano, killing 323 Argentinians, which was around half the total casualties the Argentinians would take during the war. It was the single largest loss of life that would happen in the war. This, however, wasn't taken well internationally because the Belgrano was outside of the exclusion zone, and they couldn't fire outside of that unless they formally declared war. In retaliation, Argentina would sink the HMS Sheffield with its air force, killing 20 British soldiers. Around mid-May, the South Atlantic weather was bad with winter coming in. Remember, winter starts in May for the people in the lower hemisphere. The British air campaign was deteriorating and with Thatcher ruling out any option of turning back, they decide to launch a ground campaign without having any air support. Nowadays, with better technology, they might have been able to continue with an air campaign, but it was a risky move. Nevertheless, on May 18th, a second wave of British ships reached the Falklands with a landing force of marines and paratroopers under the command of Brigadier Julian Thompson. They would spearhead the invasion. On May 21st, in the early morning, they arrived at the beaches of San Carlos Bay, northwest coast of the East Falklands. With a little resistance, they got to the high ground and entrenched themselves in. The British supply ships in the bay were unloading when they were attacked by two Argentinian Air Force, by the Argentinian Air Force. The attack lasted four days and sunk two ships and had eight hits had hits on eight different ships. On the 25th, a cargo ship called the Atlantic Conveyor reached near San Carlos Bay. The ship was carrying helicopters for the invasion. The Argentinian Air Force attacked the ships, destroying all but one helicopter. 
This meant that the invasion would have to be fought on foot, like all the wars before. The Argentinian Air Force Base kept on attacking the British ships. By June 1st, an additional 5,000 troops arrived and they were preparing for the attack on capital Port Stanley. By the end of the war, June 14th, the British had suffered 1,000 casualties and 258 deaths. The Argentinians suffered 1,600 casualties with 649 dead. After the actual population of the Falklands, which was 1,820, only three perished. In the following days, Galtieri was taken from power and was replaced with a democracy, not communism as Reagan had feared. Margaret Thatcher was to win a landslide in the next election, which was almost exactly a year after the hostilities ended. Many military analysts had considered the war to be impossible. Have a seaborne invasion of islands 8,000 miles away with no host of resupply in hostile waters. Yet they must do it in just 74 days. The Falklands War was one of the last of its kind. In a way, both nations were quite similar. It was just that the British won. How this affected the native Falklanders, you might be asking. One effect of this war includes landmines that have never been cleared. The people who live in the Falklands would be granted Britain citizenship. In 2013, the Falklanders voted to stay with the British, with 99.8% wanting to stay as an overseas territory of the UK. The Argentinians still claim sovereignty of the islands. In fact, it's in their constitution which was written in 1994. This video took a massive amount of time, so if you could like it if you like it, subscribe if you want to see more, and comment what you thought about the Falklands War, it would be greatly appreciated. My next video should be out around January, I mean February 7th. I had help with the research from Matt's IRL, so make sure to check him out. Hope you enjoyed this video and learned something. Recruits dismissed.